Okay, so in this tutorial, we'll take a look at using Storyline's dial interactions. Now, the dials are really great for letting your learners manipulate data, explore cause and effect relationships, and control objects in the course. So in this example, we have this uh, calorie counter, and you can see that as I increase the calorie count, we start to move up from uh, simple drinks to, in this case, fries when it gets to around 400 calories, and if we start going up higher, uh, we get up to the uh, desserts. So what we're doing is we're just adjusting a variable with the dial, and then based on the number value, we're changing the state of these objects. We'll also look at creating custom dials like this one here, which is similar to this, the uh, slider example we did earlier, but in this case, we're actually using a custom graphic for the dial. And this is a really great way to uh, really further customize your courses, your interactions, because any image, text, or graphic can be converted into a dial interaction. So we'll look how to do, we'll learn how to do this one as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and insert our first dial and make it do something. So we'll come up here to insert and dial, and Storyline gives you a couple of pre-built dials for you. So let's just choose the first one, and we'll drop it here on the slide. Now, just like with uh, other objects, you can scale it up or down, you can move it around, and you have some basic formatting options up here under the Format tab where you can uh, change the, uh, the face, and the face is the first part of the dial, the big part, and then you have uh, some pointer options right here where you can change those, right? So we can make that look a little different, maybe make that white, uh, maybe black is fine. But there are some basic ways that we can customize the dial, and you can also choose your own colors or, or fill it with a picture. So that's basically getting the dial on. Now when you insert a dial, you are working with variables. Now you didn't create one, Storyline did it for you, but if you come over here to the My Project Variables, you can see that Storyline created a number variable. And I can change this, right? I can call this my dial, give it a new name, click OK. But that basically, when you turn the dial, you're going to adjust a variable. And then when you adjust a variable, you can evaluate what that value is and then uh, tell Storyline to tell things to, to do things. So here's how that looks. If I come up under the Design tab, so the Format tab is how you change, determine how your dial looks. The Design tab is how your dial works. And so you can see the variable name right there, my dial. Your update options are for when you move the dial or when you release it. In most cases, I would leave it at the default so that as you're dragging the dial back and forth in real time, the uh, values are updating. So whenever you're working with variables or values like this, it's really helpful to have a uh, text reference variable on the slide just to display what that current value is. And this will help make this part, uh, I think, a lot easier to understand. So let's insert one of those real quick. So if you've never done this before, uh, whenever you're working with a variable, you can display that current variable's value at any point in the course or any point uh, on a slide. And that just really makes it easy for you so here it is under reference, and we just choose the, 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 the variable you want to display. We only have one, but if you had more, you could choose which one. It makes it really helpful to troubleshoot, verify, and just build those complex interactions because you can verify that the value is or isn't what you want it to be. So the percent sign is really just anchoring this uh, my dial variable name. That's the same name we gave it over here in the project variables. So I don't have to keep this but maybe I do. There's, way, there's sometimes you want to actually have that reference. Maybe if you want to show the value of the, of the dial here on the dial, kind of like what we saw in the, uh, uh, the food example, where as you turn the dial, the number of calories is updated here in the middle. But for most times, you just, you just, want, always, you just always want to have this on the slide so you can verify. So here's how this works. If I preview it, right? So anytime I move this dial, you see the values right there. So I can see that I can't turn it any farther. I can zip 12, turn it all the way to the left, and it's zero, and here in the middle, it's six. Well, check this out. If I select my dial, and go to design, my start value is zero, my end was 12. We just saw that, right? With this green flag, when this dial was turned all the way to the left, my value was zero. When it was turned all the way to the right, it was 12. Initial value is six, because six is right in the middle of zero and 12. I could change that six to one, right? And there's one. If I change it to two, there's two, three, 
And that's what these steps are. So, right, there's starts at zero, there's ends at 12. Each of these steps represents a value. And so that's how I know, and I can tell Storyline to do things, because when the dial is at each of those steps, it's going to be able to be, we can evaluate that and then set a trigger to change state, go to a new layer, jump to a new slide. So to keep this simple, I'm just going to update this and make this start at one, and I will end it at three. So when I do that, there you go. We have a much simpler dial, right? We have a, a starting point here of zero, of one. This middle one is two, and then the far right would be three. Well, I should probably update my initial value to two. Two is right between the two of those. I'm just gonna go with a really simple dial. So I wanna make something happen when the dial is changed, is moved to these different points. Well, it's really not evaluating where the dial is moved to, it's evaluating what the value is of that variable. The dial is just what's changing that variable. So here's how this works. Let's put a character on the slide. I always like working with characters because of the built-in states. It just makes it so much easier to quickly grasp what's happening. So let's just change her expression three times based on the value of our variable or our dial. So when it's at one, and I know this is going to be one, right? Because the starting value is one and the end is three. So this screen is one, two, and three. So let's just label this, right? So one, make that two, and I could position these and make these a lot more even, but this will be enough to give you an idea. When this dial is at one, change her expression. When it's at two, do something different. So we knew a trigger, right? So we always use triggers for this. Change state of, in this case, character one, to let's say something like talking, or let's say surprised. Surprised when, in this case, we have this new variable when dial turns, when dial is equal to one. So when this is over here, change her expression to surprised. Let's add a new trigger, and this time we will change her state to uh, maybe confused when the dial is equal to two. And then finally, we'll add one more for three. So change her state to, what do you want to do? Alarmed when the dial turns, and it's equal to three. So this is really nothing different, only we're just using a dial and a variable. But when something happens or something equals something, then change the state of something else. So let's go ahead and preview this real quick. So preview. So here's the current value, it's two, right? This is my reference variable. When I move it over here to one, there's her new position, and I can verify that it's one. I can verify that this is updating to two, and I can verify right now that that's updating to three. So that's why that re reference variable is really helpful, and I can also see where each of these pieces are. So this, just at a basic level, this is all there is to using dials. Obviously, if I add more steps in here, right, if I added, you know, 10 or 12 steps, there's going to be a lot, you know, a lot more opportunity for a lot more triggers in between each of these. But you're not limited to just changing states, right? In this case, I have a layer that just says layer one, and I can show this layer, right, at any point of along this arc. So since I'm going to change your state when it's equal to one, let's add one more trigger that says show layer. when the dial turns and the value is equal to one. So we can just keep adding as many triggers as we want to uh, you know, increase our complexity here. So if I preview it one more time, it's at two. If I go to three, right, nothing's gonna happen, but when I turn it over here to one, now also shows that layer. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at creating custom dials using graphics, images, so that we can make the dials look really like anything we want. But in the meantime, go through the practice activities for this, act, this lesson, and if you have any questions, please post in the forums. There's a lot you can do with dials. This is just a really quick introduction to getting started. Um, do the practice, ask questions if you have any, and then we'll see you in the next tutorial for creating custom dials in Storyline 360.